Welcome to this, our 58th episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time for five minutes only from Massachusetts. My name is Hayden. And I'm <laughs> and Anton. And goodbye, Mishka. <laughs> and that was Mishka for 30 seconds. And have a good show, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> and so, Hayden, today's show um, is a little bit different than our normal format. Normally, our format is, you know, uh, a, a tip in five minutes. But today, we're going to do um, a 30 minute presentation in five minutes. Um, yeah. We're, we're going yeah, to so, squeeze things in really fast. Yeah. So, so apologies for talking fast. Um, uh, this is, uh, this is about sque <laughs> squeezing material into the format that we've, uh, um, uh, enslaved ourselves to. Uh, yeah. but I think, um, it's, it, this is a topic that's interesting and valuable enough that it's worth, it's worth this, uh, this sort of, um, detour into uh, a, a different format for five minutes. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, the topic is getting started with JMeter. And uh, Anton, are you ready to uh, start working that time? I, I am. So let's go. So essentially, it's this. In five minutes, we're going to show you how to get JMeter up and running and do a quick test. So Hayden um, has a, a GitHub repo that we're going to point you to. It's got how to initially configure JMeter, record a test, scrape the parameters, and get it going. So you're going to want to go to Hayden's GitHub repo, which is right here. Um, you'll download the, deep, the repo. And the first thing that you're going to do is look at the readme that tells you how to download um, the JMeter itself. So this points you to JMeter, getting the binaries, downloading the binaries, installing the binaries. Um, once you have JMeter cloned and up and running on your machine, which as you can see takes 30 seconds, you're going to want to look at the starter template that Hayden has created for you. That starter template has a lot of great things in it. So many great things in it that I'm going to make Hayden go through that. Yeah, so, so here we are at, at, the, at the point of launching the GUI and we, we navigate to the starter template, which is in the JMX folder and the JMeter folder. So this template is preceded with the cookie manager thread group, recording and transaction controllers and script recorder that you'll need. It's tedious to set up every time, so it's nice to have it as a template. Be sure to save it as something new. Uh, so um, now we're ready to launch our test. Oh, uh, quick um, sidestep, let's... Um, add uh, the suggested excludes, because otherwise we'll be spammed with a whole bunch of unnecessary HTTP requests. When, when you launch your, your script for the first time, uh, JMeter will um, uh, create a certificate that you then need to import into your recording browser. So I'm using Firefox here, so I navigate to the settings and I import the certificate uh, so that I can then use JMeter as my proxy. So that set up, I now navigate to the proxy settings also in Firefox, and I just make sure it's listening on the correct port. So 8888. In this instance. So now I'm ready to actually visit the testing applications that I want to do my load testing against. And notice as I visit the, uh, the page, um, my transaction controller begins to, uh, my recording controller begins to log all the HTTP requests. So quick pro tip, make sure you open the page source before you go any further and then log in, uh, do your action essentially. So stop the recording once you're done and then remove the um, HTTP requests that are not relevant to you. So I'm going to delete the spammy ones and I'm gonna rename the remaining HTTP requests to be more descriptive. So we have the, uh, just a get request against the login page, a post request against the Apex authentication engine, and then finally a get request against the home page to validate that we in fact logged in. So before we go, go any further, let's examine the post request against the login. Uh, so, uh, let, uh, so because I opened the page list earlier, I can search for the values and validate that mm -hmm. the P instance is there in the login page. The P page submission ID is also there. There's something called the P JSON. Let's open that up in a, its own file to, for legibility purposes. Uh, so I'm just going to put it in a file and prettify it uh, so that's easier to read. This apparently contains my username and password, something called protected, something called salt. What are these things? If I search the page source again, I can see that the salt is the P page submission ID and the protected is something called the P pages items protected. Would not know how to- uh, Apex posts something with pages. different names than, than it gives them. Yeah. Precisely. So yeah. you, you want to scrape these uh, parameters from the login page. As, as is demonstrated. So again, I have a script ready for your use, a JSR223 a JavaScript file. Let's take a look at it. In this file, I scrape the login page and extract those three variables for use as substitution variables. The syntax is dollar curly Q. So dollar curly Q P instance, for example, um, dollar curly Q 
uh, P paste submission ID and make sure you close the, the curly queue at the end of it. And then uh, we also have to do the same thing for the pjson. I, I have it in this file, so let's just do it here. So uh, P, uh, the salt is, uh, I have to remind myself what it is. It is apparently the p page submission ID. So, uh, so I replace this value with dollar curly q p page submission ID. What is this protected thing again? I'll search the page source. It is the p page items protected. It's hard to do if you don't have the page source open. So a dollar curly Q P page items protected. I'll copy and paste this back into my Gmeter script. Final change on the home page. I also have to pass in the session state, um, the session ID rather. Uh, so uh, now I'm, I'm ready to run this. I'm going to add a listener. Uh, I can use the, the view results tree. I like it. And I'm going to run my test and it executes the three HTTP requests. I have to inspect them to validate they were successful. In the post request, I just want to make sure that the uh, substitutions happened successfully. And on the home page, it's easier to determine if it was successful. I look at the response data, and I download the HTML source data. And I can see that it clearly made it to the home page um, and passed the login page. If it weren't successful, it would show me the login page there. So future topics include adding assertions, um, scraping alternatives if you don't like the JSR, and then setting up load testing parameters, like how many users you sim simulate, stuff like that. And then finally interpreting and reading those results. And there you have it. So in five minutes, anyone that's watched this can be up and running with JMeter using uh, against your APAS application. Yeah. That's all you need, five minutes. Um, yeah, five minutes is generous. You, you'll be done yeah. in two and a half. <laughs> yeah. And if your boss asks you to do it, tell your boss it's gonna take two weeks and you know, you'll be done in five yeah. minutes, it's, it's all good. <laughs> exactly. Um, Hayden, uh, I'm absolutely happy to stick around um, and talk more about this because I have a few thoughts on this as well uh, afterwards. But um, and I have a wisdom of the week. But and if anybody thinks that all they needed was five minutes, go ahead and check out now and don't listen yeah. to us anymore. No, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have some helpful things to say about the video after the um, wisdom of the week. All right. Um, and so this week's Wisdom of the Week was actually inspired. You may remember, I, uh, and you've gone with me, I, I like to trail run. And a piece of advice that I've picked up um, when you're trail running is that if you're coming up amongst some rocks and you're trying to decide, should I take two steps or three steps? You should take four or five, mm -hmm. right? Um, you want to take short steps, get through there. Yesterday, I was on a trail run thinking about some code as I was running through a rock garden and I came up with this. If you're trying to decide if the programming unit you're working on should be broken into two or three subprograms, it should probably be four or five subprograms. Um, so I like um, that rule of thumb. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually running into that right now on some code that I'm writing that's you know hundred line long and uh, uh, or hundreds of lines long, and I'm breaking it up into more manageable pieces. So um, that is this week's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> will be nice if we get a vlog. Uh, so yeah. let's talk a little bit about that. So the first thing is we have a lot of artifacts that go along with this, not the least of which is this actual YouTube presentation. Yes. And then, and then we also have the repo that we'll link to, and then I'll link to, uh, I'll link this video in the repo. It's not there yet, obviously, but right, right, I, I will put it there. Yeah. A little, a little circular linking. Um, we'll get those, those web crawlers, um, going in circles. Um, so uh, the other piece um, of this is I, I have found that you get good output from JMeter itself on how long things took if you're trying to do some, some load testing or something like that. But for me, a, a, the easiest way is to look at the results of JMeter in the activity monitor weighted page performance report within Apex. Yes. What, do, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I completely agree. Uh, so uh, I, I think uh, uh, reading the JMeter reports is, is fine. It's, it's a little tedious to do. Uh, and I think uh, Apex just offers this friendly utility. So I, I might as well share my screen and, and um, clarify what we're talking about. Um, give me a second. Okay, here we go. So this is the weighted page performance. Let me zoom in. Wrong screen. Yeah, so uh, no um, uh, load testing is an evidence in this page, but um, were I to have run a, a meaningful load test against this, we, we would see the the, um, the weighted page performance in evidence. And this obviously has the utility of you can subscribe to it. So if you have a nightly 
um, load testing report against your load testing environment, load, uh, if you have a nightly load testing process, you can subscribe to the results and um, be alerted, alerted to its uh, success every day. Right. And you know, what is interesting too, is every now and then you can look, you can look at the difference between this report and what you get from JMeter. And if there is any kind of distinct difference, it's either network latency, you've got you know, network uh, challenges, or possibly something in the middle tier. And that's extremely rare that it's something in the middle tier, but I have found it um, with WebLogic Server a couple of times where Apex says, I finished this thing in a 10th of a second. JMeter says, this thing took 30 seconds and it was actually a problem with WebLogic Server. Um, so it's right. really rare that it's in the middle tier, but it can happen. Um, and it's an, an interesting bouncing those two things together off one another. Um, right. Ah, so um, any other thoughts on, on this? Yeah. So, so one thing, so um, I didn't call this tutorial, like how to log into Apex, um, even though mm -hmm. that is what I demonstrated through JMeter. Uh, what I wanted to capture were the tools for scripting mm -hmm. JMeter. So essentially, uh, the star template, the JSR223, stuff like that. But um, I, I definitely want, don't want to gloss over the um, the importance of of using the page source. So that that tip I think is so fundamental. Um, JMeter will record these parameters and and associated values for you. But if you hadn't, if I hadn't previously opened the the page source of my login page, how could I have figured out that the salt corresponded to the P page submission ID or whatever it was like it, right. the, the parameters are not labeled helpfully for you uh, because it's this thing is not designed to be user friendly. Right, right. And, and it's no fault of JMeter and I suppose no fault of, of Apex either, but Apex doesn't necessarily in the, in the JSON that it submits back, doesn't necessarily use the same name in the JSON that's going back that, that was on the source of the page. So you have to do, you have to, you have to look at the values and compare the values to get the right names, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and JMeter is, is forcing you to interact with Apex in a way that Apex is not designed to be interacted with. Like Apex doesn't expect users to interact with it through a series of get requests or yeah. post requests. <laughs> right, so right, right. you're, you're it, having, yeah, it's, it's, there, there's no handholding that, that yeah. um, the Apex is gonna do for you. No, nobody's using curl. Uh, as their web browser. Right. And then, <laughs> so the um, logging in is hard enough, but it's not the hardest thing that you'll have to do if, if you're um, going through any given Apex application. Uh, record yourself opening a modal page or interacting with um, items with session state protection or any number of everyday things that are part of the Apex experience. And those things have so many security parameters and mystifying uh, variables associated with them, uh, it, it can be, uh, it, it, uh, by default, it can be extremely tedious and time consuming to script that all in JMeter. Yeah, but that's really what you have to do. I mean, if you have a page with no page protection or anything like that, it's really the salt. It's the thing, the items you showed, right? But as soon as you put in page protection, you're going to be modifying at least your JSON um, post portion to add those in, but also the JSR233 file. Um, we'll get, get some additional right. things to scrape. You, you'll need to scrape additional parameters. Um, right. And uh, you, there'll be a lot of like very um, high touch editing of the uh, JMeter scripts, which brings me to a piece of advice that I can't repeat enough. Um, uh, you, you have to cut JMeter some slack. So uh, this is not how Apex is, ex is expecting to be interacted with. If you want to set yourself up for success and not drive yourself crazy through the tedium of having to do all of this through JMeter, uh, in your JMeter environment, uh, uh, lower the security thresholds. So uh, eliminate, um, uh, create uh, versions of your application perhaps that don't have such and such protection. Uh, if you have to interact with a modal, create a version of that page that is not a modal, make it a, um, a full page, for example. Um, don't just, export it. Just to try and do some load testing, that kind of thing. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, your, your load depends testing on what your goal is. I suppose it depends on what your goal is, right? Yeah. Right. Um, um, but, but, interesting. But, so but, and uh, you're, you're also maybe saying, don't tell your boss five minutes. Maybe two weeks is a better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Two weeks is um, uh, a, a pretty good order of magnitude. To just get, just get something running the first time. Yes. 
because yeah. um, every, everyone's environment is different. Um, yeah. uh, there are a lot of uh, small hurdles to overcome to uh, get this up and working. Yeah, and I'll say um, I've actually done this with J Meter with your assistance. Um, essentially, essentially looking at what you did in you know one quarter speed, as uh, Fernando suggests, um, and and really it gives you all the pieces you need to continue on and do more with J Meter. Um, I've done exactly that uh, with with essentially this level of guidance, uh, but not at you know double speed. Um, right. So it's good. It's a good start. Um, I think uh, I see there's not a whole lot of additional questions. Um, I will point out that Neelish has a good point. Um, I probably um, should keep coding uh, out of my brain when I'm running. Uh, I'm likely to stumble. But uh, um, uh, for uh, all of the vast uh, audience, do all the things you're supposed to do. Write a letter to your mom, call your friends, hit the bell, all that stuff. Yeah. See, See you next guys week. next Friday. Bye-bye.